Welcome and good evening. My name is Pastor Bruce Ninnig here at Zion Lutheran Church in Detroit Lakes. We're pleased to have you listening in to our midweek Lenten worship service. This evening, I'm joined by Pastor Matt Meyer, who will deliver the message. Pastor Meyer serves at Beautiful Savior Lutheran Church in Callaway. And Pastor Dan Abrahams, who is a lector. He serves Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Dent and St. John's Lutheran in Dora, as well as here at Zion Lutheran. Teresa Warnsholt says the evening's accompanist. All the hymns sung this evening can be found in our hymnal, also known as a Lutheran service book. For as long as this worship at home ministry is needed, we will use songs from this hymnal for singing. So if you would like to sing along at home, feel free to stop by Zion's office where we have hymnals available that you can borrow. Second, we will be spending time reading from scripture. So you might want to find a Bible at home and Pastor Dan will introduce where you can find the scripture lessons. Thank you for the feedback regarding our radio broadcasts and online worship at home resources from last week's services. Your insights were invaluable in our planning for this week. We want to invite you to continue to share feedback and suggestions with us in the future. If you're joining us for the first time this evening, you're going to join us in a journey through the passion of Jesus, reflecting on what those around Jesus would have been seeing when their eyes were on Jesus. In light of our world's current state, we will reflect on what it means to keep our eyes on Jesus. The first hymn that we will sing is hymn 420, Christ the life of all the living, We'll be singing verses 1, 5, and 7. This is in the Lutheran service book, again, hymn 420. In hearing these precious words, we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In our worship this evening, we take a moment to reflect on our lives in the Lenten spirit of repentance. 
When we examine our hearts before the Lord, our sin becomes clear and our eyes turn to the cross. This evening, I will pray a prayer of confession on behalf of all of us. Please join your hearts with ours in confession. Together with eyes on Jesus, we confess our sins. Almighty, everlasting God, for our many sins, we justly deserve your eternal condemnation. In your mercy, you sent your Son, our Lord, who won for us forgiveness of sins and everlasting salvation. Forgive us in our confession that dead to sin, we may be raised up by your life-giving absolution. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may be ever watchful and live a true and godly life in your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, please hear us as each of us silently lift the sins that trouble us most before your throne. Forgive us, renew us, and strengthen us to the glory of your holy name. Amen. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear. No eye has seen a God besides the Lord who acts for those who wait for him. Isaiah 64, verse 4. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first reading for this evening's service is recorded in the book of Job, the 24th chapter, verses 13 through 17. That's Job 24, 13 through 17. There are those who rebel against the light, who are not acquainted with its ways and do not st stay in its path. The murderer rises before it is light, that he may kill the poor and needy, and in the night he is like a thief. The eye of the adulterer who waits for the twilight, saying, No eye will see me, and he veils his face. In the dark they dig through houses. By night they shut themselves up. They do not know the light. For deep darkness is morning to all of them, for they are friends with the terrors of deep darkness. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 11 through 15. That is 1 John 3, 11 through 15. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We should not be like Cain, who was the evil one, of the evil one and, and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brother's righteous. Do not be surprised, brothers, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed of out of death into life because we love the brothers. Whoever does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. O Lord, have mercy on us. Our Passion reading for this evening is recorded in Mark's Gospel from the 14th chapter. We read the first verse and then continue on with verse 53. Now it was two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to arrest him by stealth and kill him. And they led Jesus to the high priest and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. And Peter had followed him a distance right into the courtyard. And he went sitting with the guards and warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. And some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Yet even about this, their testimony, they did not agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, 
Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But he remained silent, made no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his garments and said, What further witnesses do we need? You have heard this blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. And some began to spit on him and cover his face and strike him, saying to them, saying to him, prophesy. And the guards took him and beat him. Thus far the reading of the Passion. We continue now with our next hymn, hymn number 453, Upon the Cross Extended. Hymn number 453. i 
sustain me in the test. It will when life is ending be guiding and attending my way to your eternal rest. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. If looks could kill, can you picture the eyes filled with rage? Likely you've seen that in the eyes of another person or even seen it on your own face, glancing in the mirror. In the ancient world and still sometimes today in some cultures, the evil eye it is a glance thought to cause harm or at least demonstrate anger and hatred to the recipient. That's how I envision the eyes of the chief priests, the scribes, the Sadducees, and the Pharisees as they plotted Jesus' death in tonight's Passion reading. They were filled with hatred and murder as they gazed upon Jesus being greeted with praise in Jerusalem during Holy Week. And before that, when face to face with Jesus, they heard him speak woes and reproaches to them. For those of you who don't know, a woe is a saying in scripture that it would be better if you had never been born or that you would die than what you will receive for the evil behavior you have done. When someone says woe to me, they, they know it's bad. But if they could have spewed venom or shot arrows from their eyes at Jesus, they would have done that. Now, I don't remember what I did to deserve it, but I recall my reaction to the punishment I received as a kid. My father had punished me and sent me to my room. I vividly remember going into my room, muttering under my, uh, muttering under my breath and closed doors, I hate you. I'm angry at you. I hate you just out of earshot of my father, of course. I'm sure my eyes had that murderous look, just like the Jews in our reading today. But I knew in my heart that I had gotten what was coming, what I deserved for my, my misdeed, and I needed to change my ways. Jesus says, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. No doubt, with a rather stern, fatherly look. Jesus' words wouldn't fit with Dale Carnegie's advice in, in how to win friends and influence people, but it's what they needed to hear. So those words were spoken, spoken in love, just as my father, who had dis disciplined me. God and his representatives they speak the, the law to us, never in malice, but only because we need to hear it. We need to recognize our sin and know that we need to repent. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, said Jesus. You build tombs of the prophets and you decorate monuments of the righteous, saying, if we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have taken part with them in the shedding of the blood of the prophets. Thus you witness against yourselves that you are the sons of those who murdered the prophets and fill up then the measure of your own fathers. Jesus in saying this wanted them to recognize their hypocrisy and to repent. So he says, fill up then the measure of your fathers. He does this to bring them face to face with the murder that lay in their hearts and under the pretense of honoring the murdered prophets and behind their platitudes of we shouldn't have done what our fathers did. But generational guilt is real. When the sons of the fathers lack any repentance, Jesus challenges them to push things forward to their logical conclusion. Jesus says, I know what's in your hearts. I can see the murder in your eyes. Go ahead, walk in the steps of your father. Why don't you go ahead and kill me too and continue in your family tradition? 
There's nothing new under the sun, says the book of Ecclesiastes. Murderous thoughts and looks are as old as sin itself. Cain's downcast eyes became murderous toward his brother. The cause of murder is always the work of man. But the original source is the devil, who, Jesus says, was a liar and a murderer from the beginning. St. John says that the murderous Cain was of the evil one. In addressing the Jews who, he, who wanted to kill Jesus, he identifies Satan as the father of all who hate God's son. But how does he mean what does this mean for us? Aren't John and Jesus just waiting for Cain and the murderous Jews to do their thing? Surely the Lord is not talking to us good Christians, is he? But listen to his word. The apostle John says, everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding inside of him. A bit later in the book of John, he says, If anyone says, I love God, but hates his brother, that person is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. So follow the logic. If I claim to love God while hating my brother, I am both a murderer and a liar. Which means I cannot love God. And if I don't love him, then I must hate him. It looks like Cain and the hostile Jews and all of us, myself included, are in that same boat. This is why we make confession through our hymns. I cause thy grief and sighing by evils multiplying. As countless as the sands, I cause the woes unnumbered with which thy soul is cumbered, thy sorrow raised by wicked hands. Don't lie to yourself. You have said it in your heart. I have reasons for being angry and hating my parents, or I can make excuses for wishing that or this on my brother. I have a good cause for casting the evil eye on my neighbor. That's enough to make you a murderer in God's sight and to place you under his wrath. The Jews filled up the measure of their fathers in tonight's passion reading. And if we're honest with ourselves, we must see ourselves right along with them, hating in our hearts towards those we should love because Jesus loves them. What a marvelous thing then, that the father would allow his son to be murdered at the hands of these same sinful men, just to save a bunch of rotten sinful men. People with hatred and anger in their eyes and rage against God himself. The book of Romans says, but God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more will we be saved by him from the wrath of God. The wrath of God is not a murderous glance from the Father, but it is a look of righteous judgment upon the guilt of sin. We all deserve God's wrath just as much as I deserved my own Father's punishment, but instead of giving us what we did deserve, God gave it to Jesus instead, and Jesus willingly took it for us and for our salvation. From the cross, Jesus looked upon the masses of humanity and he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. Original sin, the sin that, that is born in our hearts from the moment of conception, it produces lies, hatred, murder, and every other kind of sin. It is so deep and so complete a disease and a corruption inside of us that we don't even recognize how it has completely destroyed us. Everything that we think is corrupt, everything we say, everything we do, unless we see the truth as it's revealed to us in God's word. 
But our murderous eyes have looked in horror on what we have done, nailing the innocent Son of God to the cross because of our sins. Then, and only then, are we really ready for the joyful good news of forgiveness for all our sins because of Jesus Christ's death on the cross. He voluntarily, while we were still his enemies, went to the cross at the hands of murderers, the death that he suffered, which has now extinguished death, which has paid for the wrath of God towards us. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, how much more now that we are reconciled should we be saved by his life? More than that, we rejoice in God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received that reconciliation. Rejoicing is the theme of the Letere, which is the fourth Sunday in the season of Lent. It is the week we are, we're headed into, the week we're in. We rejoice, not because of our failures and, and the anger and the hatred in our hearts, but we rejoice because of Jesus Christ, who has turned us away from our murderous ways, our eyes, our hatred, from our guilt, from sin and despair. And he's lifted our eyes up to look upon himself on the cross as our Savior. Amen. Now may the peace that passes all our understanding keep our hearts and our minds on Christ Jesus, that Lord and Savior. During this time of worship at home, our life of worship is interrupted in many ways. And one such area is the giving of our first fruits to the Lord. This evening we will pray a prayer of thanksgiving and then you're encouraged to give, send your offerings to the Lord to your home congregation. Here at Zion we also offer the other opportunity to help you sign up. Please contact our church office to get signed up. Meanwhile, we pray and give thanks for God's rich abundant blessings upon us. Gracious Heavenly Father, every good and perfect gift comes from your hand. O oh Lord, we're reminded that we are temporary managers of the time, abilities, possessions, and income that you provide for us. So we pray this evening, teach us to wisely manage these gifts in ways that are pleasing in your sight, and which also furthers the work of your kingdom of grace here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We also pray, Heavenly Father, for all those affected by the spread of the coronavirus. We ask for your blessing of comfort upon those who've experienced the death of a loved one. We pray for the most vul vulnerable of us, the young, the elderly. Keep them in your protective care. We also come before you asking for your protection of all medical workers Give them the, the strength that they need. Uh, spare them from the virus. And we pray, Lord, enable our country to provide the essential services that are needed to take care of the people of this land. We pray for our congregations as they figure out how to serve one another in our communities during this crisis. And we continue to lift up our president, our Congress, the leadership of, of our states and local local governments as well. May politics be set aside for the good of the country. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and let us pray together the prayer Jesus has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, who saw mankind's hopeless condition, the Son, 
who showed the depth of God's love, and the Holy Spirit, who has opened our eyes of faith in Christ, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 528, O oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. We're singing just three verses, verses four, five, and seven. Hymn 528, verses four, five, and seven. the power of cancelled sin. He sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean. His blood avails for me. Look unto him, ye nations own. Your God, ye peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. It was our joy and privilege to be with you on the radio this evening. May the Lord bring you peace in the weeks to come and keep you in his protective care. Please know that beautiful Savior Lutheran of Callaway, Emmanuel Lutheran and St. John's Lutheran of Dent and Dora, and Zion Lutheran Church of Detroit Lakes, these congregations will be praying for you as you worship at home with us. We hope to be back together as soon, together again soon, but until then, we will see you here on KDL and 93.1 FM on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. and again on Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. as well as online Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. You can find a link to these worship resources at our uh, website for Zion Lutheran. It's www zionlutherandl.org. I'll say that once again, zionlutherandl.org. Also check out that website to hear the daily three-minute devotions by Minnesota North District Pastors on our website by looking for, also look on that website, looking for tips for children and tips for worship. In light of today's Governor Walsh's stay-at-home order that until April 10th, there will be no activities held at our church buildings until further notice. May God bless and continue to be with you.